Hello and welcome to this video, this tutorial for setting up modern authentication. Now today we're going to be doing a demonstration how to set up modern authentication with Trackit. Um, at the time of this video recording, the, it's the latest version, Trackit 2021 Release 2. Uh, of course, this will also ring true if you are still on um, Trackit 11.4. So if you're running Trackit 11.4 Service Pack 2, so when you go to Help and Session Info, you'll see 11.4.2.77. Uh, that will also give you the ability to set up track it with modern authentication if you're not ready to to move to the latest version so this is really going to be focused around the setup of um, the enterprise application in aad uh, this obviously will be useful for other products that you uh, that you might be using so although we're focused and we're centric around track it it may be useful for you using different different solutions. So if you've got applications out there that are using email services, then um, you may be uh, you may have already moved away from things like IMAP and PUP and Mappy um, and that sort of traditional authentication to EWS Exchange Web Services, and a lot of you are probably using basic authentication with EWS. Uh, this, uh, at the time of, of of speaking and recording this tutorial, that's still active at the moment, but that could get switched off. And so you would be having to move to this more secure environment. So it does make sense to be ready to move from the traditional authentication to modern authentication. Uh, and this is the reason why I'm presenting a demonstration for you. So as I said, it is all going to be mostly focused uh, around the setup. And I've done some things just to pre pair for that so i've got a little text document which i've got uh, i've already given it a name of track it or ti20xx but we are really trying to capture the application or the client id the tenant the directory id and the client secret which will enable me to configure the email services uh, for the incoming mail for for track it. i've also got the base url and um, so that's already there and I will just copy and paste that but it, obviously if everything's done correctly you could auto discover and it will return that but for the sake of speed I've got that ready so we're just waiting to add those um, those three those three values into this notepad so that's already prepared uh, before I go into um, AWS I'll just show you quickly my my um, my, my server so I've got it on a, on, a, on a VM there. So let me just close that one out and we can see that in uh, full glory. And if we look at the incoming and outgoing emails and we click on new, uh, this will give you the opportunity to start filling what type of mail type. And you can see there you've got those settings, but we've got the basic authentication and we're looking to uh, complete OAuth. And it's this information that we need to gather. And that's what we're going to be populating so let me just move this off screen and let me bring on the areas I need in order to fill that. So let me just uh, maximize all of this stuff here. Um, do, 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 do. Let's remove the bookmarks and let's expand that. And that gives us a bit more coverage. Fantastic, brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to do before I start um, filling in the information in AAD, Azure Active Directory, is we're just going to quick look at the Exchange Admin Center. So this is obviously where we've got all of our users set up with their uh, their mailboxes. I'm not going to show you how to create a shared mailbox. I mean, it's quite self-explanatory here. We can see on the home screen alone, it says add a shared mailbox. And if I go into my recipients and mailboxes, you'll also see I've got the ability to add a shared mailbox there. But I've got a list of all of my users and for this demonstration today I'm going to use this shared mailbox called demo support and you can see the email address that's associated with that. So I'm going to be doing the enterprise application configuration here inside of AAD. Um, as your Active Directory, so here's the Admin Center. Now it could be quite easy to fall into the trap of looking at the left-hand side and clicking on Enterprise Applications and registering 
an application there but I don't advise in doing that um, if you follow this procedure you should be quite successful first time round um, in the configuration and setup of your enterprise application so to do that go to Azure Active Directory and click on that and that will present you a, an overview of the areas to manage so you can see also enterprise applications here and this is a shortcut to lead you there but I don't want to come into here what I want to do is I want to register an application so if we go to app registrations this is the place to go to register the application you can see I've got a couple there already created but we're going to start again from scratch anyway for this going to click on new registration and here this is where I'm going to give a name so we'll call it TI20XX and if you recall on my little documents that I'm going to populate this information so I've got it to, to hand I've already put in the name there for it so we've got that sorted brilliant the next bit we need to do there is we need to look at the account types now this is going to be obviously business specific so whatever fits your scenario and makes sense is what you should probably select here I'm going to go for the multi tenants as I've got a few networks here and it will come in handy for me to to select this particular setting for my account types now importantly you have got here a redirect URI uh, I'm not going to explain what this is you can see the words here that explains what it's about and this is optional but for track it purposes we're going to select this setting here and we're going to populate it with this URI and at this point I'm going to click on register and that's going to create the application in AAD for us now you can see here the first stage has been complete so we've got some information that we need to use so in the essentials we've got the client ID so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that onto my notepad so here's my client ID second thing I've got here is my directory ID so the tenants so I'm going to click and copy that onto notepad as well and then all I need now is the client secrets uh, to complete that so what I'm going to do before I start populating the um, the area for the client secrets I just need to do a little bit more work in in the um, in the in the um, the configuration so under manage you will also see there is an area called manifest so if I click on manifest you will see here I've got this JSON representation of some of the configuration and if I scroll down to an area that says required resource access so we can see here on line 47 I've got this already populated with some scope now the square brackets here this is obviously the area for required resource access I need to add some more um, some more code for that so I'm going to click on the enter and I'm going to paste that in and importantly here uh, now I've added the role I'm going to put a comma there so it separates it from the scope so very very important if you have got a couple of configurations within a section of your your code is to make sure you've got some uh, commas to separate that I will save that And that's been complete so great news there uh, before we do the client secret I've just got one more thing I need to do and that is to go into the API permissions now if I go into the API permissions you can see there's some stuff in here already uh, currently at the moment we've got full access as app so that's the uh, the only supported permission at the moment uh, there will be some uh, some more being uh, developed for track it but at the moment as you can see that's already set there and it has a status of not granted for TNSM tests so it's not granted for that domain what I need to do is I need to grant admin consent for that so we can see at the top here where we've got add a permission I can click on this part here to grant access or consent 
confirm the message to say that I want to do so. And we can see that has been successful and I've got the little tick to, um, to grant access. So that bit's done. And now it leaves me to go onto the final stage of setting up my enterprise application. And that is to go into the certificates for clients and secrets. So you can see here, I've got nothing at the moment and I've got a new client secret. So I'm going to click on new client secret and I'm going to give it a, a description. So we'll say TICS. Now this used to allow you to put a unlimited expiry. Uh, at the moment, that has now been from the front end. It's been limited to 24 months. So you can't go beyond two years. Even if you go to the custom and try to put in a date here, and start on an end date it's also telling you that the date needs to be from this uh, opening date and the expiry date is two years so you can't go beyond that um, it is best practice and as you say recommended to sort of do it and change it every six months uh, we're going to do it for for two two years on this one in fact i'll just do it for, for the recommended amount of time because i'm going to delete this after this uh, demonstration uh, as I said, it's only just a tutorial, so all of this stuff won't be accessible thereafter. Um, just a couple of more tips. At this moment in time, you could do something in the back end. So whilst from the front end, you only can go up to tw uh, two years, you could run a PowerShell script and do something to probably extend that. How long that's supported for, I don't know. But at the time of this discussion, that is something that you can you can do. I also know there are also some applications out there that can automate this as well, so it can renew that automatically uh, as and when needed. Um, but you know, for the sake of security, and uh, it is getting more and more important. Um, I used to do a service desk show in, in Olympia, and next door was InfoSec, which was about information security. And when the service desk show came back to Olympia uh, the following year, infosec had taken all of that space up uh, for all the service desk show and service desk show had to move upstairs into that area the following year help desk the service desk show had to move to a different venue because infosec had also took up the space up there so it just goes I have to show you how important it is here so i would encourage you to sort of follow best practice when it comes to expiry dates for for such things like this so i'm going to click on add and you can see I have successfully got a secret. Um, I've got a value there and I've got a secret ID. So the secret ID is obviously the ID to this client secret, but the bit that's important for us is this actual value here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to add that to my notepad. So now I have all the information I need in order to proceed. Um, I can move away from AAD and I can now get back into track it and complete my configuration. So let me get my VM on screen and expand that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a user account name. So from my admin center let me go into demo support and let me copy that mailbox so we've got demo support there the next bit i need to do then is i need to get the application id i'm going to copy and paste that into there the client secrets which was obviously the last exercise we did on the enterprise applications. And then finally, the tenant ID. And I can put that there. Now, I don't need to know the Exchange Web Services URL. I can click on the auto discover, and this would, after 10, 20, 30 seconds or whatever, it will actually sort of go out, poll that, and return that in there for me. But for the sake of speed, I'm just going to copy and paste the record I have got. And then finally, just gonna test the connection. And if this is successful, I should get a little green bar up here just to confirm that. So let's test. 
and we can see here the connection has been successful total and red message count zero because there is nothing in this mailbox but that is simply how you set up the configuration for track it using exchange web services with oauth and as i said you can use this also for track it 11.4 service pack 2 and the setup the configuration for the most part is something you can follow for your other applications and this concludes the demonstration and the tutorial of, of configuring that i hope it's been useful and thank you for watching Thank you.